Being cleared for a visual approach means we can navigate ourselves onto the approach course of the runway we're cleared for. It obviously requires us to be in visual conditions and have sight of the airport. A normal visual approach, like one into Cleveland Hopkins, won't require us to take any specific route to get lined up with final. We could do it visually. Some airports, on the other hand, do mandate a route. These routes are published alongside the other approach plates as a charted visual flight procedure. The AIM says that charted visual procedures are established primarily for noise abatement reasons, which is why they're typically designed for turbojet aircraft. Still, we can request or get assigned a charted visual procedure in a piston aircraft. Here, we're on an IFR flight to St. Petersburg Clearwater Airport. We're following our cleared route when Tampa Approach will come on frequency and tell us, November 518 Foxtrot Tango, turn right heading 240, vectors for the North Bay Visual Runway 18. And we'll say right turn heading 240 for the North Bay Visual 518 Foxtrot Tango. Now we'll start that turn and we can pull up the plate for the North Bay Visual. Charted visual procedures like this one will involve a series of landmarks, courses, and recommended altitudes to get us lined up on final. They also include nav aids like the St. Petersburg VOR for a secondary means of navigation. First, we'll proceed to the power station on this little peninsula. This is also on the 016 radial from the St. Petersburg VOR 6DME, though we won't need to follow the guidance, just proceed visually from landmark to landmark. We have a published altitude of 1,500 feet, but as the AIM says, these altitudes are recommendations and not mandatory unless otherwise instructed by ATC. From the power station, we turn inbound on the radial and follow it to the causeway bridge, which is at 4 DME. Notice that what the procedure is doing is keeping us away from the noise-sensitive area of clear water on the west side of the bay. This is what you'll see with a lot of these visual procedures, putting arriving aircraft over open water to spare the built-up areas on land that lie under the extended runway centerline. From over the causeway, we'll make a right turn to intercept the final approach course. This is where we can also use the localizer or our GPS for guidance, but we'll be so close we should be able to fly this portion visually. Naturally, the weather conditions need to be good enough to complete the procedure visually. Here we need at least a 2,100 foot ceiling and three miles of visibility. The procedure is also not authorized at night, likely due to the lack of lighting on some of the key landmarks. So having been assigned to heading at 240 and briefed the procedure, we can set up some navigation aids as a backup. On the G1000, we can begin by hitting the PROC hard key on the MFD bezel and hitting enter to select approach. The North Bay visual, like all other charted visual procedures, isn't an approach per se, so it won't be in our approach database for St. Petersburg, but we can overlay a visual approach for runway 18 just to give us lateral and vertical guidance for final, and we can activate it. Our autopilot and flight director are in heading mode since we got the 240 vector, so changing the GPS leg won't affect us. So on our HSI now, the pink needles are giving us deflection information for the final approach course. There will also be an advisory glide path computed and it will show up as we get closer. And we can also put the St. Petersburg VOR into NAV1, as we'll be using that for DME distance as well as the radial the power station and causeway are aligned with. We can bring up the thin arrow on the HSI pointing the direction to the VOR. Where the tail points to, currently around 050, is the radial we're now on. That tail will move towards 016 as we approach the power station. As we continue, we can spot the north side of Tampa Bay out in front of us. Approach now tells us, November 8, Foxtrot Tango, descend and maintain 3000. The power station's at your 12 o'clock, 8 miles, reported in sight. And we'll begin our descent and say, descend and maintain 3000, we'll report the power station, 8 Foxtrot Tango. It doesn't show up so well on the sim, but we know the power station is on the tip of that peninsula in front of us, and we do see a clearing where it might be. So we tell ATC, Cirrus 518 Foxtrot Tango has the power station in sight. And at that time, once we've verified that we have visual of the landmark, we'll be cleared for the procedure. November 8 Foxtrot Tango crossed the power station at 1,500, clear for the North Bay Visual Runway 18. And we read that back, cross the power station at 1,500, clear for the North Bay Visual Runway 18, 518 Foxtrot Tango. So now we can leave that 240 vector we were assigned and make whatever heading adjustments we need to overfly the power station as we descend down to 1,500. The procedure tells us the station is at 6 DME, so we can look for that distance on our DME readout at the bottom of the PFD. As we approach the power station, we'll get our hand off. November 8, Foxtrot Tango, contact St. Peep Tower, 118.3, and read it back. Switching over to the tower frequency, St. Petersburg Tower, Sirius 518 Foxtrot Tango on the North Bay Visual. Tower will come back on, 
November 8, Foxtrot Tango, runway 18, clear to land. And we'll read it back. So now we overfly the power station at 60 ME and can turn in towards the causeway. We can use the plate to tell us a 196 heading will work. We'll hold this until over the causeway at 4 DME and make a right turn to intercept final. Now our pink needles, the GPS visual approach can help us out both for lateral and vertical separation. The advisory glide path is well below us, but keep in mind we have a lot more altitude to lose doing these turns than we would on a straight and final. We'll make our turn onto final and having gotten our landing clearance, bring it in for touchdown, completing the charted visual procedure.